Hey everybody, it's good to see you for our live prayer time today. I'm Becky Brown, Associate Pastor here at First Methodist Church, and um, we're so excited that you have um, join, been joining us for all these many weeks with our prayer time, um, whether that be live or later on. Um, it's just really nice to know that we are connected in this way and that we are um, praying for each other in ways that we need so much right now. Um, so welcome to our time today. Um, I would love it if you have prayer concerns. It's, as always, you can text me your concerns. Um, I have my, my phone on me, so if there's something that um, you haven't let me know about, go ahead and text me. Um, the number is 828-421-7033. So um, go ahead and do that. And anytime you have a prayer concern um, throughout the week, please text me or call me. I would love to know how I can pray for you um, and how we can be in that moment together. So as usual, I share just a brief devotional um, before we go to God in prayer. And I've been reading this book, Christ My Companion, by Marilyn Chandler McIntyre, um, and uh, going through the meditations of the prayer of St. Patrick. And um, I read this portion recently, and I thought it was very, very interesting and helpful. Um, it's from the chapter, Christ to Comfort and Restore Me. I mean, we all need comfort and restoration right now. Um, so uh, she looks at the comfort and restore um, uh, ways of viewing Jesus. And she says, having taken a full look, the promise of comfort and restoration is very good news. We are held in the will of a completely attentive God who cares more than we can imagine and calls us to life not by avoiding death, but by preparing us to walk through it and through the sufferings that precede it with full confidence. Comfort and restore are not entirely separable ideas. The original meaning of comfort was to strengthen. An early rule of religious life enumerates nine comforts, and she goes through and talks about those comforts, um, because to be comforted was not to be made to feel better or even to be healed from pain or sorrow but to be equipped to face the next struggle. And so that struck me when I was listening to that, when I was um, reading that um, slowly, digesting those words. Um, our, often our need for comfort and restoration um, comes out of a sense of need for rescue. And I know that that's a way that we view God, but thinking of God as a God who um, who heals our pain and, and also seeks to help us uh, through our sorrow. Those are truths, but thinking about comfort and restoration from God is strengthening. So it's not only sitting with us, but also equipping us to face the next struggle. And um, I don't know about you all, but it feels like during this time um, where, where I'm doing right now, doing the live prayer in an empty sanctuary, um, to a cell phone on a stand. Um, you know, these times uh, are continually where, where I find myself, and I'm sure you do too, and desiring comfort from God, desiring restoration um, from God. And, you know, it's not simply about the rescue. It's also about the strength, the strength to continue to face new struggles um, because they seem to keep popping up. I don't know if you can identify with that, but that's how I feel. So it reminded me of Isaiah, um, and I haven't read Isaiah in a long time, but, and I've been really um, into my Common English Bible lately. Um, that's a translation that has been speaking to me um, during these times. And so I would like to share a little bit of scripture with you from Isaiah 40, um, verses 1 and 2, and then later, verses 26 to 31. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended and that her penalty has been paid and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And then later, look up to the sky and consider who created these. The one who brings out their attendants one by one, summoning each of them by name. Because of God's great strength and mighty power, not one is missing. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My God ignores my predicament. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the, cre the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. He is understanding, and his understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. It's the word of God for the people of God. So as we go to our prayer time today, I'll just check and make sure I haven't had any texts come in. Um, but I did want to share with you ways that we can pray together as a church. Um, the first is some great news. We have a new baby in our church family. Um, always great news to share. Um, Carolyn Smith, who um, has been doing wonderful things with our children's ministry with young children for many years now. Um, you can catch her on that preschool time um, on Sunday mornings for Sunday school. Um, her son, Ethan, who's also a major part of our congregation, um, had a baby girl, and her name is Elizabeth Taft Smith. And so we rejoice with them um, that all is as well with them, born early this morning. So we celebrate with their family. We have several concerns to mention today. The first is um, Joyce Golden uh, lifts up her mother, Maxine Farmer. She has, had, has been battling cancer for over two years now, um, but just recently heard the news that um, the cancer has spread and there is not much more the doctors can do for her. So prayers for her um, as she lives out her final months and um, a specific prayer that um, she really wants to see the beach before she dies. And so um, they have booked a trip in September. So hope is they'll be able to go and enjoy that trip. Let us continue to pray for Katie Scott. This is Mark Scott's mother. Um, so prayers for Mark and Judy and Katie. Um, in her last days at Silver Bluff. Prayers for our Kathy, for Kathy McNeil, um, giving thanks that she is home from her hospital stay and surgery. Um, she's still recovering at home, but she is so grateful for all the prayers. Um, so please continue to pray for her as she looks toward her treatment options um, in the coming, the coming days and weeks. Donna Machen had hip surgery on Monday and is doing well and um, is home now. So we give thanks that that surgery is, is over for her. As well as Carolyn Hamlin, um, she had hip replacement surgery on Monday um, and, is, and all went well. So we give thanks for that. We continue to pray for Kim Shipman um, with multiple health issues and dealing with a lot of pain. And we also um, continue to pray for Donna and Dave Wilkins' son, Ross, who has MS and is at Autumn Care. Um, prayers for Brenda Grady. She's recovering from knee surgery. And uh, prayers for Christopher, who has um, pancreatic stones and is working through treating those and is in pain. Um, we've also uh, learned that Willie Hubbard our Willie, who directs our handbells, um, he has a cancer diagnosis, and he just received the news um, in the past few hours. And so prayers for him as he um, goes through that process and looking towards treatment for that. We also have several um, members of our church who are grieving losses who have died this week. Um, Jane Golden died. She died last week. Um, and uh, so prayers continue for their family. Um, her service was this past Sunday in Hickory. Um, also, Milt Folds died. And um, so prayers for his daughter, Susan, who's a member of our congregation. And Milt um, was very active here when, he was, when we were in church together. Um, so his service will be great, was, was a graveside service um, at the Oak Grove uh, United Methodist Church Cemetery in Decatur, Georgia. Um, so that was on Monday. We also learned that Lillian Coffey's brother died, and Lillian is Leo Coffey's mother, and they live, she lives with them, and this is, was her last remaining sibling, and she's the oldest, and so it's a, it's a big struggle um, with deep grief, and also prayers for Leo um, with a shoulder injury. We also learned that Robert Campbell died, 
So prayers for his family as they make arrangements for his service. So uh, lots, of, lots of reasons to um, be in prayer, lots of reasons to consider ways that we can reach out and show love through cards or other ways of extending our condolence as well as encouragement for those going through difficult times. And we also um, remember um, all of our schools, <laughs> um, all of those who are teachers and students and families and um, dealing with the stress of figuring out what the school year looks like and virtual school and all that comes with that. Um, so prayers for that, that process and for all of those involved. So let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks today for the reminder that you are a comforter, that you are one who restores us. For there are many reasons today that we come to you on our knees, come to you in a holy space to seek comfort, to seek guidance. In a world, in a time where things are always changing, where um, there are new realities around the corner that are anticipated in many ways that are not. We ask that we would reach out to you, the God who created the universe, a God who never grows weary, a God who is always with us. Help us to sense that restoration in our souls, to be re reunited with you if we have felt distant. And to seek that comfort that moves us, moves us from a, from a place of stagnation or moves us from a place of huddled up in our grief, unable to move forward. Help us to use the strength that God gives to soar in whatever reality, in whatever situation, whatever setback, difficulty, or stress that we have. So we lift up to you these that we've mentioned today and others that have mentioned prayer concerns that are not shared aloud today. We ask that you would hear them, that you would know them, and that you would offer to them your presence, your grace, and your mercy. So we ask that you surround them all with your love and with your support so that they might feel your comfort and your restoration. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So thanks for joining me today for our noontime prayer. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>